Hi, I'm Jerry from PressureWasher.net, Sirocco Vacuums, Bulldog Pro Pressure Washers. I want to talk about the functionality of a heater and, uh, and troubleshooting because there's a lot of guys out there that they never do a tune-up on their burner and then of course they've got problems and want to know what to do. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, disperse a little bit of the uh, mystery in these things. I'm going to explain to you guys how this thing works. Um, these diesel burners have a, um, a, uh, a, 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 a motor system underneath this burners that actually pressurizes the diesel fuel and it sprays it through an atomizing spray nozzle and it ignites that spray with high voltage that's uh, uh, a high voltage spark that um, goes on on demand on a 12 volt unit on 115 volt units that spark r runs continuously and we only turn on the fuel occasionally as we need when there's water flowing but um, on these 12 volt units the high voltage turns on at the same time as the fuel does um, we'll get back to some of that functionality in just a minute but the basic idea is we're pressurizing diesel fuel up over 100 psi that's a magic number um, if you don't spray diesel fuel at over 100 psi it doesn't atomize well enough that we can ignite it properly so um, the first thing that we need to know when there's something wrong with the heater or when we're adjusting a heater is we need to know that the fuel pressure is 100 psi or more so this unit has a fuel pressure gauge right here screwed into the front of the fuel pump some units have a fitting on the back side that we have to screw into but this one has the uh, fitting right here in the in the top and pointing the, uh, the gauge right out at you so when you um, when you turn on a diesel burner uh, a 12 volt you should have a you should hear the fan running it should sound like it always sounds normal. It should sound like it's blowing real well to get air up into the chamber. But we got no heat until we um, we actuate the uh, the flow switch. Um, oh, copper is so slow. So actuating the flow switch on this is the water flowing through from the pump. So when you open the trigger gun, water flows through this flow switch. There's a magnetic slider in here that slides up and there's a magnetic reed in the flow switch in here, this magnetic reed. So the magnetic slider slides up next to the, next to the magnetic reed and turns it on because you've got water flowing. Right now I don't have water flowing, but um, if I was to take the magnetic uh, reed and slide it down next to the magnet, I can actually hear it click. It's a very faint click. You won't be able to hear it on this video. But when I slide this down so that the top of the, when the, when the sensitive part of the magnetic switch is next to the magnet that's down here on the bottom because the water isn't pushing it on right now, I, I can actuate this and make it think it's supposed to go on. So right now, if I flip on the burner switch, I've got fuel pumping, I've got the fan running, and if I, if I take this next to this, I'm turning on the fuel, my light indicates here that, that the flow switch is turning on the, um, uh, turning on the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the relay that actuates the temperature control and the, uh, and the fuel solenoid. But um, if I don't have the temperature turned up, then of course the next light doesn't go on. So I'm going to show you right now that if I actuate the flow switch with water flowing, that enables my temperature control. If I turn up the temperature control, I get flame and the light down below on my relay turns on because the control circuit is telling us that we've got flow. The temperature control says it's okay, and I've got power getting to my relay that turns on the high voltage in the fuel solenoid. Using a high amp rated 
set of contacts is how we make these high voltage igniters live a long time and, and reliable. The contacts in the relay are 70 amp contacts. Those are plenty strong enough, beefy enough, to turn on a high voltage that requires about a 20 amp jolt, 18 to 20 amp jolt when it first turns on. Um, people need to understand that the high voltage igniter actually draws a startup current that's not unlike an electric motor starting. So that initial jolt going across a set of contacts needs to not burn the contacts. That's why we absolutely do not use a pressure switch contacts rated for 15 amps to turn on a high voltage igniter and a fuel solenoid at the same time. We're just using a control circuit, especially a flow switch, because number one, if there's no flow, we don't want the heater to go on. If something happens to your unloader, and even with the gun off, you've got pressure up against the pump system, which is also pressure against the heater, uh, the, 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 the pressure switch for the heater, then we could, you could potentially have the heater going on when there isn't even water any, flowing through the heater. So we use a flow switch to turn on the temperature control circuit, which turns on the high, uh, the relay that energizes and turns on the high voltage and the fuel zone at the same time. So we're, we're putting less stress on the contacts of the control circuit because we're only turning on the little relay. That little relay is, only requires about one amp to turn it on. That's going to allow these contacts to live a long time. So the read and the flow switch last a long time. The, the temperature control um, um, contacts inside the adjustable temperature control will last longer, less, con less, less current running across those things. We also have a inlet temperature control on our heaters and that's that's a redundant temperature control if you want to look at it that way but this is the magic trick in making our coils live like forever compared to anybody else's if there's no water flowing and the flow switch stays on it i mean they'll eventually fail but if it stays on and you've got heat a fireball burning in here we don't want to blow up the coil just because the temperature control is way up here with the fire burning down here, this piece of pipe right there in the main flame, this temperature control in here that's rated for 140 degrees saves your coil. So even though it's perfectly normal in this industry to have a heater coil blow up every six to eight years like clockwork, you'll find that Bulldog Pro Pressure Washers, the way we set up our controls and safeties, these things live 10, 12, uh, even longer years. I've got, a, I've got a unit that's used every week that's 28 years old and it still has the original coil in it because the customer's taking care of it. Yes, he drains the water out of it in between uses. Yes, he tucks it away nice and neat and takes really, really good care of it. But if you take really, really good care of something that's designed to be as bulletproof as possible, you get long-term low cost. Let's go back to troubleshooting for a minute. Some of you guys go up and down in altitude. You know, as, as, for example, a guy in um, a, a guy in um, uh, Denver, Colorado, is in the Mile High City, right? Well, he's a mile above down here in San Diego at close to sea level. So when we send him a heater, we have to adjust it for higher altitude. But that's going to be a plus or minus a little bit thing. He might have to do the final adjustment when he gets up there. So what I want to show you here is that there's an air adjustment on the heater. I'll show you where these are. Right here on the front, there's air bands that go around the perimeter of the system. Here's a screw at the bottom that you want to loosen right here that allows you to move this air band to, to make the adjustments. Here's the, the openings. You want to look at the slots and see how far it's open and um, this is the air adjustment for uh, for the burner and there's also a side plate with a fine tuning adjustment there's a screw right here and one opposite on the back side of the fuel pump back here on, on, the, on, the, on the back
right here on the back. Okay, so right here and also right here in the front, there's a screw right there. We like to loosen them up just enough that you can move things. They're not going to vibrate off and fall off. It needs to be checked once in a while anyway, but we like to leave it so that if you're in a hurry, you can adjust it by just grabbing it and moving it. It's not going to just vibrate around if you don't have them too loose. So um, this, is, this is ready for the guy that needs to go up and down in altitude sometimes and um, wants to make some quick adjustments. So um, again, we, when we flip on the burner switch, we want to have 100 PSI or more on the fuel pressure gauge. But um, these systems, depending on how big the heater and the size of the oil burner, we might want to have as much as 140 PSI. We've found that the most reliable range of, uh, for working pressure on these, depending on the nozzle size you're using, is it seems to work best between 110 and 130 PSI. They're less finicky in that range. You can go higher if it wants to burn clean. You can go a little bit lower, but you cannot go below 100 PSI. And by the way, on this type of, of uh, fuel pump, when we turn on the fuel pump, we get the full pressure reading, and every time you turn this thing on, it'll read the same pressure. It'll read that 100 PSI or 105 PSI or whatever you get it set for every time. So just like making sure that your pump is giving you good pressure when you go to fire up your machine in the morning to do a job, you, first you fire it up, make sure you've got good pressure, and then you turn on your heater. You don't want to turn on the heater if you don't have good water pressure. you got to find out why you don't have good water pressure first. So when you turn on your heater, as insurance to make sure that it's functioning correctly, you turn the, the switch on, make sure your fuel pressure is like normal. If it's low and bouncing around, you might want to refill the tank or find out why it's, why, it's not, uh, why it's not working correctly. And by the way, if you're not getting fuel pressure like you normally would, then the first thing that you want to know is if it's low on fuel and the dead giveaway is when you plumb a heater with the clear nylon braid hose we we know that out in the sun it's going to have to be replaced every four or five years but troubleshooting is the most important thing you will do in getting your race car back on the road so we use the nylon the clear nylon braid hose so we can see what's going on so if i don't have proper fuel pressure the first thing i want to know is if i'm sucking air bubbles in from the doggone fuel tank if you're sucking in air bubbles from the fuel tank go fill up the tank and get back to work okay you fill it up and you, you got good fuel coming in you turn the thing back on and you got good fuel pressure that's great if you don't then you look at your return line that's this other line going back to the fuel tank. If you're bypassing air bubbles back into your fuel tank, then maybe you've got a clogged filter. Maybe it's getting fuel, but it's not passing it into the pump because it's sucking air. Maybe there's a fitting broken that's sucking air, but you would have an indicator that you need to look for your problem right here as long as you can see whether you've got air bubbles or not in the line. If you don't have a fuel pressure gauge, and if you don't have clear lines for the suction and return on your on your heater, you're guessing at what could possibly be wrong. That takes hours. And if you drop off your heater at the local service center and you're paying him whatever, 100 per hour, to guess at what's wrong with your heater, you might want to go back to the drawing board and maybe replace some fuel lines with some cheap hose and get a fuel pressure gauge on your heater so you can easily troubleshoot the thing. If you got good fuel pressure, you know that you've got fuel, the, the pump is turning at the right speed, you probably have good voltage on your battery. If you've got good fuel pressure like normal, then your heater problem is probably someplace else. Okay? So, um, let's talk about the way this thing burns. Okay? So, setting this thing up, what I'm going to do right now is I've got my air bands uh, fairly closed. I'm going to take the side plate and I'm going to turn it completely closed. I'm going to use the main air bands to, to do my main adjustment. So the side plate, the, the, air, the air gap is, is closed up on the side. I'm going to use that for my fine adjustment. So I'm going to turn it on right now 
I'm going to go get some water flowing through this thing real quick so that, I can, so that I'm not going to overheat what's going through here. I can cheat with the switch to make it think that water's flowing, but with a 450 or 480,000 BTU heater here, we would overheat what's in that thing. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the air bands on this unit. So I'm going to turn the heater on. I've got water flowing through the heater right now. Turn the heater on. Temperature control, temperature control turned up. It obviously goes on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the air bands while I'm watching the, the, uh, the heat come out of the stack. What I want to do is, is I want to have them closed enough that it smokes and I'm going to open them up just enough that it clears. And then I'll explain what happened. So I got that black smoke. just cleared okay just came to clear I don't want to give it any more air I don't want to give it any less air I just want it to be just clear okay and when it goes off I get no white smoke when it when I turn it on there's a very tiny little puff before it ignites not a big deal if it was to giving you white smoke uh, before it ignites that would mean that it wasn't igniting properly, and um, let's um, let's talk about that for a second, okay? So we've got a fireball that's perfectly adjusted with fuel pressure and air adjustment, so that it um, uh, so that it's burning nice and clean. The um, fireball fits in the cavity inside this. There's there's, there's a cavity inside here that we're, bur we're burning a perfectly shaped fireball into a chamber that's just barely big enough and we're going to heat that water by, by the heat passing through the coils. But, but hang on. If we have too much air pushing through, then that perfectly round fireball can get oblong and, and it can get longer and it can allow the the, the atomized mist of diesel fuel to hit the bottom of the coil and what that does is it causes the mist to coagulate into bigger droplets that won't burn instantly then when you let go of the gun or the, the main flame goes off you get the white smoke coming off the top so whenever you have white smoke coming off the top when you let go of the trigger gun you may want to back off on the air adjustments a little bit or you have other issues. Other issues would be um, the fuel pressure is a little bit low, it doesn't want to ignite properly, but generally speaking, 95% of the time, if you let go of the gun and you get the white smoke, then it's simply um, unburned fuel that got in there because the, the air has blown the spray up against the bottom of the coil and it's dripping down now and of course it's hot in there so it wants to atomize but it just didn't burn when the main flame was on okay now if you get if it's been working fine for a minute whatever you're cleaning along and all of a sudden you let go you uh you go to open the gun and you get white smoke and, and a big old billowing white smoke then that tells you that you've got fuel spraying in there but it's not igniting properly so maybe you've got too much air to the point that it blows out the spark. If there's too much wind against those against the spark gap, it can actually blow out the spark, so it won't ignite the fuel. So if you've got too much air, it can cause the white smoke and the delayed ignition, okay? If you get black smoke when it does light up, that means there's unburned fuel in there and the fuel spray with the main flame is adding to that the, the unburned fuel that's around it in the bottom and now you've got too much fuel in there to burn clean so it's giving you black smoke. So then you gotta shut the machine off, ask yourself, why do I have too much fuel in here? Was it not igniting properly before? 
did I run low on fuel and now I got the fuel pressure bouncing around? If you got the fuel pressure bouncing down below, below 100 PSI, then it's not going to ignite properly. It's going to build up in your coil, then uh, in, the, in the heater shell. And then when it does light up, you're going to have that big billowing black smoke, maybe even flame coming out the top. Okay? Um, there's another situation with mediocre heaters that don't have a very good cover plate going up the center of the coil. See, when these things are, are, are coiled up, it's Schedule 80 pipe. That stuff is thick. It takes a big machine to bend this stuff, and it doesn't bend it super small. The smallest it can bend the, the steel pipe is about like this. So just to have a burner chamber that can contain the flame, they put a plate covering up that hole. If you look at the top of the heater, you'll see a plate that um, you'll see a plate that covers up the top. Well, there's also a plate that covers up the bottom from the bottom side. What this does is it forces the heat to go through between the pipes instead of just going up the middle. So if you ever have a situation with an older heater where you open your gun and you got this big old, you know, jet engine flame shooting up the middle of it, well, maybe that plate has burned away. We special order our heaters to have a doubled, super thick, beefy plate on the bottom side. It's being burned away for a living. Let's make it take a long time. So our heaters are going to live longer because that plate's not going to burn away so quickly. But a lot of these machines that have heaters that are designed to be, you know, to blow coil every six to eight years, well, they'll just have a thin little plate and you got to watch out for that problem. Maybe the coil's still okay, maybe all your controls are doing fine, but you got to flip that thing over off the base just to weld the Dagon plate back on. It's what you got to do. Anyway, so if you've got too much fuel, you get the billowing smoke, you got to go find out why. But remember, this is a chamber that burns a perfectly shaped fireball. If you got too much air, it blows it up against the bottom of the coil, gives you the white smoke when you let go of the gun. And if you have uh, too low a fuel pressure, it won't ignite properly, then you get the billowing black smoke. I'm going to talk about billowing black smoke in a whole nother thing because if you've got a lot of fuel built up into your coil, you have a problem that can be unsafe. So we're going to do that in another video. We'll talk about that next. Um, for now, that's the functionality of a diesel fired heater and how they basically work and how to adjust it if you're going up in altitude or if you're just doing that fine tuning adjustment. If you had to change the burner nozzle for some reason, you might want to adjust your air bounds because the new nozzle works a little better. You can make it less finicky. Um, there's reasons for you to know how to adjust that air. And if you don't have a fuel pressure gauge on your, on your heater, on your fuel pump, if you don't have clear fuel lines, it is so much harder to troubleshoot these, this thing.